Hi everybody, um, Act Auntie here again. I wanted to make a video today about attachment patterns. Um, I think it's uh, just really important information that everyone should have really because it can be so helpful in understanding yourself um, and others um, in all kinds of relationships and um, especially romantic relationships. So I am going to keep my bunny ears on because the uh, Ego hasn't got a sense of humour, so even though we are going to talk about some serious things, um, I hope you won't mind the ears, they're just full of bunny love. Um, so basically, attachment patterns are certain patterns of thoughts um, and beliefs that can um, lead us to behave in certain ways. Um, and there's different opinions on where they come from. Um, some people think that it's just our natural born temperament um, and that it is genetic but i think the general opinion is that um, it really is mainly from our childhood um, it is our part of our conditioning that we received as children um, and it was our mind's way of keeping us safe in a situation that obviously um, that often wasn't safe for us so it's not a bad thing that we learnt these um, skills they were vital at the time to keep us safe but it's just that they don't often serve us as adults they're often not helpful um, but because they are subconscious thoughts um, until we actually see them and understand that that's um, the thoughts that we're having and those are the thoughts that we're letting lead us um, then we can't change them so understanding them is uh, that's why it's so important um, and there's a great quote here from Carl Jung, which I think kind of sums it up. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. So that is why it's so important to know what some of our subconscious thoughts and beliefs can be. Um, like I said, it's unfortunately for a lot of us, we might not have had um, the ideal environment in childhood. Um, and I think that's enormously common. Um, if we had, if we were lucky enough to have a very nurturing and safe environment, we might have developed a secure um, attachment style. But for many of us, we have developed a different kind, which is um, the main kinds are avoidant and anxious. Um, but the great news is that um, we can change these. They're not static. And that's what's exciting. Um, once we actually know what's happening, then we can change the ways that we react and respond, respond and behave. And the, the more... Uh, the, different ways we behave um, basically we will change our own neuro um, our own brains through neuroplasticity and so we can all walk to work towards having a more secure attachment pattern which is so much healthier for ourselves and for the relationships that we um, are in with other people so if we had a childhood um, there would be there could be many many reasons why uh, our main caregivers or caregiver um, couldn't give us that emotional attunement um, and nurture or um, maybe just weren't physically there for us in the way that we kind of needed to create that secure attachment. Um, you know, maybe we had a parent who was emotionally immature, maybe had narcissistic traits, maybe had an addiction, um, maybe had their own um, struggles with um, mental health or physical illness, could be going through a bereavement um, or a divorce or financial issues. You know, there's so many reasons. and. You know everyone is doing the best they can with what they have so it's not about blame and we don't want to get stuck there um, in the past but um, at the same time you know it is having enormous self-compassion and validation for what we went through um, because a lot of these circumstances um, were very hard and challenging and it absolutely was not our fault um, and so you know if you find that this does bring things up for you I would definitely recommend maybe speaking to um, a counsellor or a therapist you know because I think it is about a part of a grieving process sometimes to come to terms with some of the things we went through when we were younger um, and there's so many fantastic books about this subject which can be so validating and helpful and just knowing that you are not alone in what you went through um, in itself can be so helpful um, so basically that is where a lot of our thoughts and beliefs um, came from like I said they were self-protective at the time but it's just that they might not be helpful now. Um, so it is about learning to create that secure pattern, you know, and, and so how do we do that? Um, um, so first of all, it's like, what do, um, it, I'm gonna show you. So first of all, so we're gonna focus here probably more on romantic relationships. So when we first meet someone, 
we tend to leave all our baggage kind of behind. We're very fully present with that person, hopefully lots of eye contact, very interested in each other. Um, so, you know, we, we've left our past behind. Basically, we are in the here and now. And so hopefully this is kind of what it looks like. You know, we really are with that person, um, you know, and this is a place we obviously hope we can stay, but life uh, gets in the way and basically things will happen to us again, you know, on our normal day to day life where we get anxious and and when we get um, when we feel stressed or triggered, that's when we can um, our attachment patterns, um, thoughts and beliefs can can um, be brought back up and they can just be quite unhelpful to ourselves and, and, and other people, I guess, um, they're not very helpful in relationships if we're not aware of them. So these are the main two types. And like I said, this is just a brief overview. I'm gonna post loads of um, really helpful resources of books if you wanna find out more about the subject, which we'll look into in a lot more detail. So I'm just hope, hoping that this is just give you a bit of an, enough information to get interested in the subject, um, to want to find out more and some hopefully some helpful tips um, on how you could start working with these um, things straight away. So basically this would be um, more an avoidant um, pattern. And like I said, you know, you, you're not gonna have all of these things. And as well, it's important to know that we often flip flop between the two. You can have avoidant and anxious, or we can have a more, uh, tend to have a more avoidant style, or we might have a more anxious style. So for an avoidant person, they might have been in an environment um, where they had someone that wasn't physically there for them very often and so they had to look after themselves and they probably became overly self-reliant or maybe they had someone that was very controlling um, and so they felt um, that you know now they just are very scared of, of repeating that pattern of somebody controlling them so they could have thoughts about you know I need space I feel suffocated I need to keep my distance people are too needy too emotional I don't want to be controlled I must keep independent um, they might not like that much physical attention and touch. They might be rigid and inflexible, can seem a bit distracted, shut down, distant and emotionally unavailable, can be mistrustful of other people's intentions and like to keep people at a distance, overly self-reliant and not consistently available and sometimes could not be empathic or compassionate to other people's feelings. So the way I've done it here, I like to think of it as an iceberg. So this is us in our situation now and we can often think, you know, why am I you know I'm reacting and doing things sometimes that are so unhelpful I regret it later and it's just like you're not aware that all these thoughts are coming up from your subconscious into your present now so they were helpful then but they're not helpful now so that's why we need to be aware of them so we can change them um, and so this is the of um, oops, sorry, that's the same one this is the anxious one here so um, Unfortunately, we might have been in a situation where someone was physically abusive to us, you know, in a situation that was actually very threatening and, and scary, or that maybe someone was very invalidating, not at all encouraging. Um, you know, we didn't really get a good um, sense of our own self-worth or value. Um, so we can often have thoughts of, you know, I'm not worthy of being treated well. Um, you can be a people pleaser, you know, if you had to really look after someone else, someone expected or demanded that you um, looked after them or made you feel like you were responsible for their moods and happiness. Um, so I need to please people for people to like me. Uh, what if he or she leaves me or cheats on me or, you know, I just don't trust people. And they can often be too tolerant of bad behaviour from others. They don't see their own worth. They can have low self-esteem, have anxiety a fear of rejection or abandonment and upsetting others. They can often put more attention um, on others than on themselves and mistrustful and find it hard to believe that there are people who are kind and trustworthy. And so I think straight away there's just, you know, we, we need to have enormous compassion uh, for where these thoughts and feelings and behaviours come from. And we can see the similarities as well um, between the two. Um, and so it's having compassion for ourselves and having compassion for other people when we see these thoughts um, and patterns, you know, coming up um, because they come from a, you know, a difficult place. Um, so, sorry, just got a few cards here. So, um, but, you know, we don't have to be defined by our past. Um, we can choose now as adults how we act and behave. Um, and how we react to our own thoughts um, and body cessations as we as they arise and we don't have to repeat these old patterns 
Um, you know, and it's so important because we are made for connection. You know, human beings are social creatures. Um, you know, we crave intimacy. We crave to be seen, heard and understood, um, accepted and appreciated, you know, and we need physical touch and emotional um, resonance and attunement. Um, and so, you know, quite often maybe um, people who are more avoidant can be in a relationship and then, um, you know, almost like self-sabotage, they will um, isolate themselves or, um, you know, because they feel suffocated and leave a relationship. But then after a bit of time, they realise that they actually did like that closeness. That is what they want. Um, you know, and so it's just how we change these patterns so we don't hurt ourselves and we don't hurt others. You know, we are, you know, healing by doing this work. Um, you know, and it is just like an old dance. Um, you know, we've learned a certain dance routine and we're doing unconscious steps all the time. But it's like when we realise what the old tunes are we're dancing to, you know, we can change and learn new steps. And like anything new, you know, it can be uncomfortable at the beginning when it feels unfamiliar and we might want to give up and think, you know, is this worthwhile? But, you know, with a bit of perseverance, you know, we will change. Like I said, you will change your um, neural pathways. You will change your brain by new habits. Um, you know, and we can then uh, change and hopefully live a life um, that's more fulfilling and, and richer in um, for ourselves. Um, and so a little phrase I came up with, um, you know, you have to see it to free it um, and feel it to heal it. So a lot of people think, you know, why would I want to feel these feelings? You know, for a lot of people, they can, um, you know, especially with these patterns, we can feel very out of touch with our feelings. We might not actually be able to say what it is that we feel. Um, and it's really helpful to get a list of feelings and emotions and actually start to identify, you know, what we are feeling um, if we feel very um, out of touch with our feelings. Um, and people are very f frightened sometimes to feel what we consider like negative emotions. Um, and I think sometimes, you know, I'm sure we all know people who maybe just seem like they're angry all the time. But actually underneath anger, sometimes there can be a lot of sadness and people are frightened to kind of go there. Um, because they think it's going to be overwhelming and it's too much but I think the important thing is to know that no emotion is too much for you to handle and um, actually the resistance to those feelings is what ca is causing so much of that pain um, you know feelings just want to be felt and understood you know we need to just learn to notice and name them where they are in our bodies you know where they show up a tightness in our chest you know a tightness in our jaw um, and we can learn to ground ourselves and anchor ourselves and, you know, surf those waves of emotion, you know, and it's so important to be in touch with our feelings because if we don't know what we're feeling, we can't um, know what other people are feeling, you know, so it makes us less um, empathic to other people, less sensitive. Um, and also, you know, this a whole amazing spectrum of human emotions, you know, if we allow ourselves to feel the end that we might consider more negative, we open ourselves up to feeling the whole spectrum, which means we'll be feeling more happiness, more joy, more awe, more wonder, you know, to feel fully alive. You know, that is the reason we want to be allow ourselves to feel these feelings, you know. So it's so important, you know, to allow ourselves to do that. So with ACT, um, there's lots of skills that we can use. Um, the first one I've talked about, which is awareness. Um, obviously, awareness of what attachment patterns are. Like I said, there's a lot more information um, some great books where you can do quizzes to work out your attachment style. Um, and then awareness of the thoughts um, that, uh, you know, those pattern uh, loops, thought loops that come up for us when we um, feel stressed and anxious. Um, like I said, you know, that iceberg hopefully might give you some that you might recognise. Um, but, you know, we all, all have our own thoughts and beliefs that come up. So it's noticing those thoughts and beliefs that when they come up and realize that you are not your thoughts. Like I said, you know, a, a, a past something will trigger you now, which will just, um, you know, trigger those thoughts from the past. So there's nothing we can do to just stop them coming up, but we don't, it's how we react and respond to those thoughts that are the important thing. We can pretend they're just like a radio in the back road, background radio, doom and gloom. We don't have to listen to them. We don't have to be jerked around by them we don't have to be led by them that's the important thing but we have to be able to notice them first of all to be able to say oh I notice I'm having the thought that you know well, thanks mine for your contribution there but you know I'd, I'm, I'm going to choose to do something different this time um, and then the biggest thing is willingness flexibility you know am I willing to do something to change you know to show up differently for myself um, and for others um, you know, without willingness, you know, we can't change and grow. Um, 
but you know that's where our liberation and transformation lies in doing something different so willingness is key that flexibility of of wanting to learn wanting to change wanting to do something different you know being willing to practice um and then compassion you know enormous self-compassion like i said for ourselves for having these thoughts and beliefs in the first place and knowing that absolutely that it's not our fault um, you know, and so when we will be practicing new skills, you know, it might feel difficult at first, um, you know, and being patient with ourselves, you know, being really compassionate and kind to ourselves for what we've been through um, and, you know, and giving ourselves a pat on the back for, you know, being brave enough and, and courageous to try to change, you know, these things, you know, being vulnerable enough to be willing to look at these things because vulnerability is a real strength, you know, that is true courage, you know, so give yourself a pat on the back. Um, you know, for being willing even to look at these um, things. Um, and like I said, centering, um, grounding, anchoring skills are, are super helpful, you know, when we feel very emotionally overwhelmed to really, you know, to put our feet on the floor, you know, to be able to maybe learn to take some, um, to learn some breathing techniques, to really listen uh, to sounds, um, to look at um, colors in the room, um, textures and things to just bring us back into our bodies to calm down so we're not being so caught up um, in our emotions and when we just practice that we'll learn more emotional regulation um, for a lot of us you know we we didn't learn a lot of um, self-soothing techniques you know unfortunately maybe there wasn't someone to soothe us and cuddle us and tell us you know things that would be okay so a lot of us just um, can feel very um, dysregulated a lot of the time or um, disconnected from our emotions and so, you know, it's putting in that bit of work to get in touch with our emotions, you know, and to learn to be self-soothe, to learn to self-soothe and to be kind to ourselves. Um, and then, like I said, acceptance of um, these difficult thoughts and feelings. Um, and this isn't wanting or liking them. Um, this is like acknowledging them, um, you know, making room for them, you know, knowing that they are there and not avoiding them. Um, like I said, making room for them, um, you know, expanding around them, you know, imagining if they were, um, if they had a texture or a shape, you know, what would they um, be like, you know, just sitting with these feelings and getting familiar with them and realising, you know, they're often messengers telling us something about our lives, maybe that some needs, um, of, you know, are not being addressed, you know, we're not actually getting um, some of the things that we need in our lives, you know, um, you know, maybe it's telling us that, you know, we, we need more social connection with other people and um, so those feelings are telling us something important. So, you know, we do need to listen to those. Um, but, you know, it, it can be tricky because, like we said, you know, when we have had, um, you know, difficulty in our past, you know, sometimes our um, thoughts and feelings can be telling us that things are dangerous when they're not. Um, and so, you know, that, like I said, there's lots of brilliant um, ACT resources about working with anxiety um, and learning to soothe um, that part of ourselves so we can step out of our comfort zone, you know, and understand what risks are worth taking. And But at the same time, you know, sometimes maybe when we're in a situation that isn't healthy for us to, um, you know, and so it's just learning life skills, basically. That is what ACT is, amazing set of life skills. Um, you know, so we can navigate life um, better. Um, and then understanding our values is hugely important. I mean, a lot of the times we can be caught up in our head um, and actually what matters, especially in relationships, is what is in our heart. So it's almost dropping from that headspace to our heart space to, you know, where we, you know, where we love, where we care, um, you know, and what matters to us deep in our heart. You know, do we care about um, kindness and integrity um, and compassion? Um, and, you know, and if we do, then, you know, values work both ways. You know, we need to be kind and compassionate and have integrity with ourselves. Um, and then we put those values out into the world using committed action with our behaviour. You know, how can I be kind? You know, how can I be, um, you know, compassionate to others? You know, how can I be um, honest and open? You know, how can I communicate clearly? Um, and for a lot of us, you know, we haven't learned um, a lot of great communication skills. You know, maybe we grew up in an environment where there was a lot of conflict. Um, so, you know, it's important to um, discover new skills. There's some fantastic books on how to communicate, um, you know, with clarity and calmness, um, you know, about um, emotional intelligence, really. You know, this is what this kind of comes down to, you know, how we can evolve and become more emotionally mature and 
um, you know, show up as our best selves, um, you know, in for ourselves and, and in relationships. So um, in ACT, um, Russ Harris came up with a brilliant um, tool called the Choice Point, which is so helpful. Um, and so an exercise we do in ACT as well is like if I was, you know, say 90 on my, you know, rocking chair on my, you know, porch thinking back over my life. Um, or, you know, if I imagine someone really reading a eulogy at my funeral, what would I want them to say about me? You know, what would I have wanted to have stood for in my life? Um, you know, it's, you know, who, who do I want to, to be? You know, it's, it's, it's so important things, you know, life is short and precious, you know, it's, um, you know, we don't want to waste time, we want to show up now and live our lives as the person we truly want to be. Um, you know, and I don't think many of us on our deathbeds are going to say, oh, wow, you know, I'm glad I was in control more often. You know, most of us are hopefully going to say, you know, I'm so grateful for those fantastic relationships I had with um, people, you know, where I, you know, loved and, um, you know, and I was loved by others, you know. So that's why it's so important to, to understand what matters to in our, you know, what matters in our hearts so we can show up and be the person that I want to be. So um, here in... Um, so this is one I've just drawn up as an idea for what it might look like for someone who's got more an avoidant pattern. So um, it would be things, away moves would be things that take me away from the person I want to be and the life I want to live. And towards would be to know what matters, takes in, take intentional action and following my values. So away moves might be keeping people at a distance because that feels safer. Um, I might be distracted and distant, you know, that's just a, a, a familiar habit. You know, I might need space um, and tend to isolate myself from the people I love. Um, I might be impatient with myself and criticise myself. So what would be towards moves, um, you know, in the opposite direction there that maybe I could take? You know, maybe that could be letting people in a bit more, you know, calling a friend to see how they are, you know, start taking little baby steps to maybe start talking about feelings to get a bit more emotionally close to people um, you know when my partner or friend wants to talk about something you know give them my full attention um, you know and that might be a limited time for a while you know and I think you know explain to people that you find that difficult you know and just you know like I said be compassionate to yourself and it's just you know taking baby steps in the right direction um, you know and we can explain to people why space is important to us and work out a way to get both of our needs met so you know you get some space but you give someone some reassurance you know and set some time aside to be together too so you know you're both getting what you want and need um, and you know um, learn to be kind to yourself and, and patient with yourself um, and, and you know with others too so that would be one that would be more for an avoidant style and then this would be one that is more for an anxious style here. So away moves um, might be that we let anxiety stop you doing things that you want to do. Um, you know, you let people in your life boss you around a bit. Uh, you can get emotionally overwhelmed and upset and angry and act out and then regret it later. Um, and, you know, it can be mean and, and critical to yourself. So towards moves might be start to take small steps to do things that matter uh, to you. Uh, practice being assertive, you know, and set boundaries with people. Learn to say no, you know, to things that you, maybe you don't want to do if people are putting, um, you know, demands on you all the time. Um, practice those anchoring skills and learn the power of pause, you know, to respond and not react. Um, and practice speaking to yourself with kindness and compassion. And like I said, you know, so there's a lot of um, skills, you know, that we, a lot of us didn't learn. So like I said, there'll be lots of books about um, how to be assertive, you know, how to uh, communicate clearly about emotional intelligence, about empathy and compassion, you know, and it's just like we, um, you know, compassion and empathy are such important skills, um, you know, to learn, to be able to speak to ourselves with kindness and to be able to speak to other people with kindness. Um, so like I said, I will pop lots of those resources below. Um, and there's a quote from uh, Viktor Frankl, which is um, hugely helpful, that says, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. 
you know, and that's what it's all about. You know, yes, we did learn these um, patterns of thoughts and beliefs, but we don't have to be, um, you know, led by them now as adults. You know, we could just let them be there and make different choices for ourselves. So when we know better, you know, we can do better and, um, and make, you know, better choices for ourselves. So I think as well, I wanted to say that sometimes people with an, um, an anxious uh, pattern can sometimes um, end up with people who don't treat them that well, but, uh, because that might be a familiar pattern. Um, you know, they might f it feels familiar to not be treated that well. So it's uh, um, having discernment about that as well. Um, and so, you know, we want to be aware as well that, you know, none of us are perfect and it's okay to give people, you know, a second chance. But, you know, if somebody really isn't, you know, is, is this person that you're um, involved with, are they actually doing what they say? That's very important. You know, if someone is saying that they love you and care about you, but are they actually being loving and caring? You know, are their actions um, kind and loving, you know, most of the time? Um, do, you know, do they communicate clearly? Um, do they blame and shame and, and guilt trip you? Um, you know, do they have your back? You know, do you feel like, you know, that you're a, a, a team member with them? Um, you know, it's um, because um, unfortunately that, you know, sometimes can be uh, more like uh, people who've got narcissistic traits. And so the key thing there is, um, is willingness there because that's one thing that probably will be lacking and that's what's uh, very important, you know, to um, make sure that the people that we're involved with, you know, are willing, um, you know, to care about us um, and, you know, want to, uh, you know, like I said, have our back and, and be a team player, you know, is this person um, caring about this relationship and caring about me, you know, so that's very important. Um, and so really, I, I know it's a bit of cliche people saying about, you know, you can't love yourself. I'm sorry, you can't love others unless you love yourself first. But, you know, loving yourself, you know, what does that mean? You know, it is about valuing yourself, um, you know, validating yourself, um, being kind to yourself, you know, and, and trying to meet your own wants and needs, um, you know, and, and surrounding yourself with people who treat you well. Um, you know, that's so important. You know, that, that is what caring about ourselves means, really. Um, and so, you know, it's if we can do these things um, and work with these patterns, um, it can just be so helpful in making sure that um, we look after ourselves and that we're involved with people who want to look after us too um, and care for us. You know, we obviously need to look after ourselves. We're not giving someone the responsibility of looking after ourselves, but, you know, it's all about, you know, caring and nurturing and being empathic and kind and understanding, you know, hopefully in a relationship. Um, and so in a secure relationship, you know, if we do meet someone who is secure, it can feel almost a bit too good to be true. And I think people can feel um, a, a bit suspicious, you know, if we haven't been used to having somebody who's um, got our back and care about us. Um, but, you know, hopefully this is the ideal that, you know, we are heading towards, you know, hopefully in a secure relationship. You know, you will almost be treated like royalty. Somebody will care about you very deeply. And I'm not saying this is all the time. And, you know, you know, like I said, we all flip flop into unhelpful patterns. Sometimes nobody's in like this place all the time. But, you know, hopefully this is an idea of what we would be wanting to look for, these qualities. Um, you know, we want to find people who want closeness and intimacy that, you know, don't play games, that are warm and affectionate, they express their feelings for you. They're good at repair when, you know, we do make mistakes or maybe have arguments. You know, they're flexible and, and willing. Um, you know, they're not rigid and um, not willing to change or, or, you know, or be open to any new ideas. Or um, They're reliable and consistent. They're open and honest. They communicate well. Uh, they're a team player. They're not afraid of commitment and dependency. They treat you well and want the best for you and have your back. They're kind and considerate, empathic and compassionate. And so this is the kind of relationship we want with ourselves as well. So it's having a secure relationship with ourselves and with other people. So, um, you know, I think, like I said as well, you know, that can probably feel a bit like overwhelming, you know, oh my gosh, you know, I'm never going to get to that place. But, you know, no one is put with effect. Like I said, you know, we're all going to fall back into unhelpful patterns. It's recognising that we do that. And then how we, um, you know, just regroup and, you know, follow our values again. 
um, you know, and just start again in every moment. That's the important thing. And, and you're not being, uh, you know, hard on yourself. You know, this is a, you know, this is a human trait. You know, in Buddhism, they talk about um, aversion and clinging, you know, and kind of that's what these patterns are really, you know, um, a lot of clinging and, av and aversion. Um, so, you know, so it is just human nature, really. Um, and so it's just how we work with these, you know, when they show up for us is the important thing. Um, and so, you know, people, there's a lot of uh, people worrying about what they, you know, are they good enough for a relationship or, um, you know, a lot of things about like our physical appearance and things. But I think the real things that matter, you know, is our, you know, lovely human qualities when you meet someone, you know, so like having psychological flexibility, sensitivity, thoughtfulness and caring, emotional maturity, honesty and openness, integrity, ending, understanding um, your own history, being able to own your own mistakes and repair, warmth and kindness, being able to talk about feelings and communicate um, and not to act out, you know, being able to apologise when we do, you know, having compassion, empathy, you know, that's attractive, I think. I think we'll all agree that's what we'd want to, um, you know, find in other people. And so, you know, the, this is how we can learn to be that person for ourselves as well and then how we can step out into the world and hopefully, you know, this is how we basically heal ourselves um, and kind of heal the world ultimately um, the more we can um, you know learn to be in a secure place we can show up that way for other people um, and hopefully um, you know meet other people who treat us with respect and kindness um, yeah so I hope this has been helpful like I said I'm going to put lots of resources below about um, attachment patterns um, and about communication and empathy and uh, compassion um, and hopefully this has been useful. Okay, I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.